Start a fourth regal, but since we're already in Jerusalem, we don't count it, so we still have Shalosh Regalim. But we have a fourth major holiday here, and on we're going on with Shmini Atzeret. And I don't know about you, if it's not raining, most of us will be sitting in our sukkah tonight. We don't say a bracha on our sukkah. We do you still eat in it because there is some confusion? Is it really a whole totally different holiday? Although people generally agree with that, or is it part of Sukkot? But tonight, when you say Kiddush, you're going to say Hag Hashmini, Hag Hatzeret Hashmini, because it's the eighth day of Atzeret, of uh, stopping and enjoying and being with God. So it's got a holiday, and we're going to say Shechianu because it's a new holiday. So that tells me that it's a totally new holiday. And whatever debates we have about sitting in the sukkah, I think it's because we went to all this work. You can see like all this work and we want to spend one more night enjoying it. So we sit in the sukkah tonight without a bracha. So where did this whole Simcha Torah thing come from? So I want to tell you a little bit about Torah reading in ancient times. So according to our tradition, Moshe set forth that we would read the Torah on Shabbat morning publicly, but it wasn't divided into parshiot. And then Ezra came and said, no, not just about morning, but Monday and Thursday when people are going out to the market. And also Saturday afternoon, we're going to have a preview of next week's Torah reading. Great. And that gets set. And the question then is, how do we do that? So <clears throat> in ancient Israel, the Torah gets divided up into portions according to Israel. So if we have every Shabbat on a leap year, the maximum number of, of Torah portions, I believe it's 150, gets divided up. Um, that's why we have doubles here in, in the diaspora. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, those portions are then read on Shabbat. However, there's a caveat. It seems that in ancient Israel, the portion red had no specific beginning in the, in the start of this or a specific end. Whoever got up, got up, said the bracha, read three verses at least, but if they wanted to, they could read more. And the person having the Aliyah read the portion. But without an end point, you don't know when the Torah is going to be finished. So now we have all of these portions. And some people go further, some people do less. And the Torah takes, at this point, take three years to read. So when people say to you, there's no such thing as a triennial cycle, they're lying. They're not lying. They're just wrong. But in ancient Israel, at the same time, we had a triennial cycle. The triennial cycle took three years to obviously to read the entire Torah, but other than doing it like we do it today, we actually read Breshi, 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 Shmot, 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 you know, at the beginning of each book. We didn't read um, Breshi a piece, and then Noah a piece, and then Lech Lecha a piece. We read the same portion for three weeks, as far as you went, and each synagogue each synagogue, when they finished their reading of the Torah, they would have their own celebration of finishing their triennial cycle and starting up again. And that became the, the custom. And most of those actually happened before Pesach. So Pesach is the beginning of our year. I know we just had a new year, but Pesach is also a new year. Nisan is the first month of the year. And so we had this bizarre situation where people were starting to reread the Torah <coughs> in Nisan before Passover. And everyone was starting at a different time and every synagogue had their own party in honor of rereading Torah. 
And I have no idea why I only start coughing when I start talking in the sukkah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, meanwhile, in Bavel, in Babylon, something different's happening. <coughs> they actually said, nope, we're going to make a very specific schedule for Torah reading. <coughs> we're going to divide up the aliyot. You know, these are people who would eventually become <coughs> the, <coughs> excuse me, I'll have to switch the tea. These are the, or I should switch the scotch. Maybe that would help. These are the people that will eventually become the, the uh, you know, yekis who are going to be very exacting. So in Babel, they say, nope, we're dividing up the Torah into very specific parshiot. We're going to start reading <coughs> when we have the new year of Rosh Hashanah, not the new year of Nisan. And so it became the custom in Babel to start reading af right after you finished the holiday readings of Shemini Atzeret. And so we read, eventually that got pushed forward and because they have an extra day, they needed something to do. So that got pushed forward in Shemini Atzeret with its prayer for rain and with Yisker and with all of these other inserts, there are things that you didn't necessarily want to repeat the second day. So we weren't going to say Geshem and they say Geshem again. So slowly the celebration of the rereading of the Torah gets moved to that second day of Shemini Atzeret. And because the first day has, a, has those longer liturgy and because the first day is the day on which we say Yizkor, eventually Simchat Torah and the rereading of the Torah becomes the party, becomes the big celebration, and that becomes a day people focus on instead of the actual holiday, which is tonight and tomorrow of Shemini Atzeret. Now, if you're in Israel, there's only one day, which means, as Stan and I were talking about this yesterday, this is the longest, it seems like the longest service ever. So you're going to start regular services, Pesuket Zimra, Shachari, Torah reading, but wait, we're going to start rereading the Torah, so everyone has to have an Aliyah. Don't forget Hallel. Oh, I forgot Hallel. Before Torah reading, after after the Amidah, we're going to say Hallel, full Hallel, not like the end of Pesach, where we only do half a Hallel. We don't have a forget, full don't Hallel. Forget benching, don't forget benching Kohanim twice. And if you're in Israel, well, nowadays, definitely, probably then too, you had Birkat Kohanim during the repetition. Don't forget yes, Yisker. And then Yisker gets put in there somewhere. Some places put it in. Um, it, right after the Torah service, some people put it in later. There are a few different spots that people might choose to put it in. You have that. You have Geshem. You have Aliot for everybody. You have Musaf. You have drinking. You have pandemonium. And that's how you get to this crazy celebration. And what's happening behind Stan, which are fireworks obviously going off for Simchat Torah in Israel. But that's why that becomes the, the day that gets celebrated. Because when people want to think about the good stuff, they think, why are we celebrating? We're celebrating because we're rereading the Torah. No, we're celebrating. We should be celebrating because we get to spend one more day with God. For those of us who don't work for Jewish organizations, I know this is actually a hardship because it means one more day that you need to have off from work. It means one more day that you can't uh, go back to, your, to the, your regular life and you have to explain to the rest of the world, of the non-Jewish world, why we're still doing this. One of the things that I always love when my kids start their semesters at school, is they say right away, right away, email your professors, explain to them. So I know I just started this course, but by the way, these are the classes I'm going to miss. <laughs> two days of Rosh Hashanah, one day of Yom Kippur, the first two days of Sukkot, and then two days of Shemini Atzer, and you have a week of classes you're already missing, or a week of work you're already missing. So people like to remember not the hardship of that, not the use score, which maybe makes you sad, 
but absolutely the celebration and the craziness and the fun that is a bit per that we have of Simchat Torah. That what we're celebrating tonight. I had a friend yesterday, as it rains here in Toronto a lot, this Sukkot, we did not get to enjoy our Sukkah as much as we have in some years past. And so a friend said, really? Do we really have to pray for rain? But we will be, we're praying for rain in Israel. One year I was in Israel oh, for, I, I, I don't remember if it was a mission or I was there for a conference. I was there in January and I, in Hebrew, it started raining and then started raining sideways. Meanwhile, in Toronto, it was a beautiful winter. It was very warm. And I jumped into a store to get out of the rain. And I said in Hebrew, for this, I was praying. And the guy in the store started laughing. So one of the lovely things in Israel is, even if the guy in the store was totally secular, he knew the cycle of the year. He understood Shemini Yatzeret. He understood prayer for Geshem. He understood what I meant when I said that. And so it's something that we're going to do tomorrow that binds all of us together, spending this extra day with God, praying for rain in Israel, hoping that maybe the world can slow down and be a little peaceful. And so with that, I'm going to say Chag Sameach, I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom, and I'm going to turn everything over to Zach. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Rob Jen. Uh, by the way, your school-age children and grandchildren should have no problem praying for rain because that means, at least in the north, snow days. Not anymore. Now we have everything's on Zoom. <laughs> That's true. Or at least we used to. Anyway, uh, Stan, I need sharing privileges, if you don't mind, please. And am I being featured or no? I can't tell. Yeah. Cool, because I, I still see Jen nice and big on my screen. So. <laughs> um, so if you remember last week, those of you who joined us, we started with our, um, sorry, it's the right color of my screen. So it's uh, gonna change. Um, yes, that is not actually my kitchen. Um, <laughs> we, we put some, uh, I, uh, I, we could not use a natrog. So we, I was using a lemon and I put it in some vodka and it's been marinating. And the fact that it's actually changing color as I turn it tells you that it's probably changed a nice shade of yellow. Um, if I share and switch cameras, come on. Thank you, Stan. Yeah, not that camera, but that camera. You can see it's now a nice shade of yellow. So now that it's been marinating, ideally you want to let this sit for a week, maybe two, up a month is ideal, but two weeks you can be just fine. Let's see how much we ended up with. Because like most time I did not measure. It looks like I have just a smidge over two and a half cups. So what you want to do is take your, take some simple syrup, sugar, there we go, sorry. Some uh, simple syrup which is in this case, one part water, one part sugar uh, by volume. So one, I, in this case, I think it was a half a cup of water, half a cup of sugar. And then I shook it in this bottle vigorously for about three minutes. And that is a no boil way. So the other way to make simple syrup is you boil water, then you mix in the sugar and you wait for it to cool. And um, it takes a lot longer. This way you get your simple syrup a lot faster. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a nice little handy dandy online tool. Uh, come on. I'm sorry, my, my laptop is having difficulties. So I'm trying to do this on my tablet tonight and it is not cooperating. Ah, here we go. New share. Share my screen. There we go. You see my screen now? We're going to go here into, not that. Oh, it got deleted. Darn. Okay, we're going to search. We're going to do this from the beginning. We're going to search so you can see which ones I do. We are going to do um, dilution calculator for alcohol. And I use this one here at distillingspirits.com.
this part's really, really important. We are shooting for an ABV, uh, an alcohol by volume of approximately 30%. That's kind of your ideal for this type of liqueur where you could, the, your, your uh, litmus test is basically, you wanna be able to put it in the freezer and you want it to be able to get nice and freezer cold, but you don't want it to freeze. So you don't want so much water mixed in that uh, it freezes when you put it in the freezer, but you don't want so much alcohol that um, you end up with really, really strong liqueur that's impossible to drink um, and probably not nearly as sweet. Um, if you want to cut down, if you don't want it as sweet, you can cut down the sugar syrup to uh, uh, two parts water to one part sugar, but that's up to you. Um, we are going to, so now target actual before dilution, it is at I forgot what my vodka was at. I, let's just say it was at 80 proof, which is 40% alcohol. And our target is we want a roughly a 30% alcohol. Uh, crap, I got to convert cups into liters. Alexa, what's two and a half cups in liters? 2.5 cups is about 0 0.591 liters. 0 0.591 liters. And then you calculate and it will tell me come on uh i need to mix in 0 0.2 liters of water alexa how many cups is 0 0.2 liters alexa how many cups is 0 0.2 liters 0 0.2 liters is about 0.85 cups. So about a cup of water, or more or less, a little under a cup of water. Oh, here, I can. Go back. You know, Zach, I'm thinking of having Alexa turn off your lights right now. She can't, she doesn't know how to do that. Okay. There we go. All right, so it was 0 0.85 cups. So I'm gonna call it three quarters of a cup. So three quarters of a cup, three quarters plus half is two and a half. So it'll take up to roughly, is that one and a quarter? No, two and a, two and a half plus three quarters is, I'm a music major, I can only count to four. <laughs> three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. That's what I thought. Okay, good. So I'm going to take this up to now about to three and a quarter cups. And that's it. You're done. After you've diluted it, you can put it in whatever vessel you want. I just got another jar here because I have nothing else to put it in right now. And uh, that is your Etrog liqueur. Simple, easy peasy. My recipe takes much longer. You put it, you put everything in the bottle and wait for it to basically, the, uh, for the sugar to dissolve? First we marinate the, the, um, the zest mm -hmm. for six to eight weeks. Right. Then we add the simple syrup and more, and more vodka. Are you, so you wanted a, yeah. Depending, if you and use another alcohol, six to eight weeks, it's ready by Pesach or for Purim. <laughs> we can have it for Purim. Usually, what I do is I let it sit, the let the rind sit extra long, so I know I get all that oil out and all that flavor out. And when I bottle it, I give it away from each Nice. I'll go get. I'll order from nice bottles and tops and labels from Amazon. Make it look really nice and give it out from each I'm impressed. <laughs> So that is the easy way to make estrogue liqueur. The other way of doing it is you marinate your, um, your peels for about a month. You take the peels out, you add in the sugar, and then you let it sit again for another month, and the alcohol will automatically infuse with the sugar. Um, you will get a much more flavorful product that way, but if you're willing, if you've got to wait two to three months to get it. This way you can have pretty decent liqueur in about two to three weeks. 
Thank you very much. Do you want to, speak about, you want to speak about next week's um, event? I believe we have Cantor Heavenstone from Dix Hills next week. Yes, we do. Oh. So, so that's now, it's, now, now it's time to do your Cantor stuff. Now it's time to do my all my all two psalms. Well, you know. And I'm sorry we don't get musical accompaniment this week because my um my laptop decided to take a little um there's a word for it, a four-letter word for it. We'll call it a poop. Uh before <laughs> right before getting on the Zoom call. So <laughs> Um, so we are the only doing, because we don't have um, a Kabbalat Shemini Atzeret, we don't want Shemini Atzeret to get jealous. So we don't do a full Kabbalat Shabbat. We only do uh, the Psalm for Shabbat and the Psalm following prior to Ma'ari. So uh, if you are following along, I have handy the uh, Lev Shalem. It is on page 27, but we will begin with Psalm number 92. Mizmor shil yom haShabbat, tov lo l'adonai l'zmei l'shim chal yon. Sadikat Kaddish to Rabbanon again? I got a thumbs up. People can unmute if you wish. <laughs> Ba'agala ovizban kadi vimru amen. 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 Al Yisrael vi al Rabbanan vi al Tamidehon vi al Kol Tamidei Tamidehon vi al Kol Man vi Askin vi al Raita vi vi al Trahadin vi di al Kol Atar vi al Tar Yehe Lachon Lachon Lama Rava Chima Vechiz Da Gurachamim Lachayin Arachim Nana Rechana Ufachana Min Kadam Ulhon Yivishmaya Vimru Amen Amen Yehe Shlama Rava Min Shemaya Chayim tovim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mromav. Hu ya'aseh hu v'rachamav ya'aseh shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. 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 Thank you again to uh, Zach and Jen and everyone else who participated and Ron and Ron Myers wherever you are on the screen. Thank you very much for 
for making for making this a, a, a sponsorship and memorial for your wife, your late wife, Rena. Thank you all. Anyone who is interested, perhaps marking a bris or any other event, um, you're welcome to do so with us. Just give Alan or I a call. We'll make sure it happens. Um, we want you all to be part of this. And uh, next week we have Cantor Stephen Heavenstone. Um, the guy is such a lover of the IKC. He's come to every convention in the last how many years? Yes. He's a good guy. Um, Steve will be with us. And then after that, we have Neil Schwartz, um, who want, who's, who's uh, going to be doing it in two weeks. And Zach's put together a great program. Thank you to Zach again. Thank you to uh, everyone who's been on with us. And uh, have, a, have a Shabbat Shalom. We'll let you know what the timing is going to be. We'll work it out with the, three, for the four of us, Alan and Jen and, and Saray. We'll work it out. We'll figure it out. We'll let you know. And uh, Shabbat Shalom. Have a good Shmini Chagat Seret. And um, everybody, why are there eight of these days? That's all I got a question. Stay safe, stay dry, and uh, just <laughs> Shabbos is here.